good afternoon to all of you and welcome to Life Foundation Summit 6th event. I cannot possibly do justice even if I was asked to, be, to, uh, to introduce Professor Piccadet, an extremely distinguished and eminent speaker. Uh, the reason is that it would just take too long and we're here to, to, to listen to him. Uh, <clears throat> our own introduction to this extraordinary person is rather interesting. There was an email circulating in the internet titled, How Doctors Cheat People, with Professor Segre's name as the author. <coughs> now, it was a bold expose about medical malpractices that many of us know or suspect. Uh, what Sucheta did was ask a colleague of ours to, to write to Professor Segre and check whether he had indeed written it. Sucheta <laughs> Segre, no. okay. We discovered that he had not, and his name had been attached to the piece by someone for two reasons. First, to give credibility to the men and ensure it goes viral, and it did, everybody was talking about it. The second reason was because Professor Edgar, despite his formidable string of degrees, qualification and experience in mainstream allopathic medicine, takes a rather holistic view of modern medical practices and alternative medicine. He has an extremely broad view of medicine, which encompasses alternative therapies and treatments, and we at Money Live were thinking of expanding our own coverage of healthcare with exactly this in mind, explaining to readers the limitations of modern medicine as well as the malpractices that modern kind of greed and, and you can't make play medicine for that, it's, it's really the, the modern kind of greed as I was put it, that has brought, uh, that has uh, you know created havoc uh, among today among patients. So Chetha wrote to Dr. Hegre requesting him to write for us and soon our readers were fortunate to receive the remarkable fruit that happens when deep erudition gets pollinated with deep compassion. Following this was another stroke of blood. Professor Hegre happened to be in Mumbai and was extremely kind enough to accept our invitation to speak. Thank you Dr. Professor Hegre once again for being here with us today. As I said, it's impossible to do justice to Dr. Edward with just a few words, but I will give, provide some basic details for those who are not familiar. He is a Padma Bhushan awardee and counts many Nobel laureates and presidents among his close friends. But most importantly, he is admired around the world not only for his medical skills, but for his insistence on minimum use of medicines and stress on holistic medicine. Professor Edward did his MBBS from Madras, where he was a gold medalist and won a prize in surgery, did his MD in Lucknow. He's a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians of London, Edinburgh, Glasgow and Dublin. He trained in cardiology at the Harvard Medical School under Nobel laureate Bernard Long and at the National Heart Hospital and the Middlesex Hospitals of London. He's been the Vice Chancellor of Manipal University and, and has taught at some of the world's best known medical schools. He holds the rare distinction of being the first Indian examiner for the MRCP UK exam examination of the Royal College of UK. He is probably the only Indian to be a fellow of all the Royal College of Physicians of the British Isles, including Ireland. He was conferred the honorary fellowship of the Irish College in Dublin recently, given to non-members based purely on academic and research excellence. He started teaching at a very young age and is teaching even today when he gets the time. The best teacher awards that he has obtained from across the world many times speak for themselves. His disdain against high-tech diagnosis when the time-tested bedside methods and common sense alone would suffice must have molded hundreds of future high-quality doctors. A permanent visiting professor of cardiology in the London University since 1982, he has been recently appointed affiliate professor of human health at the College of Human Health and Sciences of the University of Northern Colorado. Hundreds of research papers in the leading science journals in India, UK, USA, Germany, China and their citation indices stand testament to the high quality of his research. He is on the editorial board of many Indian journals and the British Postgraduate Medical Journal, the British Journal of Clinical Research and as a referee for the British Medical Journal, he is held really in a very, very high esteem in research circles. Professor Hegre has not only written academic articles but, but has also for the masses in several languages. Indeed, he is so good in communication that he's also written a book called The Art of Public Speaking with a foreword by Nani Palkewala, 
which sells like hotcakes at Bhartiya Vidyavan. He has authored more than 30 books, both in medicine and other subjects in English and Kannada. Professor Hebris' fight against unnecessary drugging has made him very unpopular among some of his colleagues and the, and the drug companies especially. He's fought against the mighty drug lobby and the technology lobby to make healthcare affordable to the masses. He believes that since modern, medicines, uh, modern medicine alone is beyond the reach of 80% of the world's poor population, the solution lies in combining the best in many systems of medicine. He's been working to spread Ayurveda in the West and has succeeded in helping an NGO to start an Ayurvedic college affiliated to Thames Valley University in London and an NGO in Japan has offered him four acres of land to start one of them. His unconventional village development programs implemented through his university with financial assistance from donors are being copied all over the place. He has schemes for total health care for the masses which are yet to catch the imagination of our netas and babus. His paper on action plan for health for all for the next century is drawing attention not only of Indians but for many others in the world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the doctor with a hand of the pulse of the power <laughs> without having met her and I found she was a very good human being, you know. I like good human beings irrespective of who they are, what they are, what level they are. You know, in my university I used to like, there was an attender in that lift. He was the best human being that I had, had met and I used to always like him. One day, for some reason, somebody didn't like him, they wanted to dismiss him. So the registrar's order dismissing him was on my table. So I said, why you dismiss this man? So I summoned him at my office. You know, normally a peon is not supposed to come to the vice chancellor's office and if he comes there, he'll shiver in his pants. So he thought he will get some real, you know, mouthful of... Uh... So I told him, sit down. He said, no, 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 I can't sit in a chair. I said, what's wrong? You are born like me. You will die like me. In between, why this difference? Maybe if you had the same opportunity that I had, you would have been higher than me. I am only a vice chancellor, you would have been probably the president of India, who knows. Then he was still shivering. Then I said, look, if you don't sit in this chair, I will dismiss you, according to this order. <laughs> but if you sit, I might promote you. Then he sat down, then I asked him, how did this get generated? Then he said, how his uh, you know, colleagues who didn't like him working too fast, you know, too hard, etc., etc., created a lot of problems. Sorry. Built a big fight, that's how it happens in organizations. Anyway, to cut the long story short, I promoted him. Even today, the university says he is the best person that they have in the university. Human, humane, compassionate, loving. What more do you want? So, we want good people like Sucheta and all of you here. And I met her boyfriend today, another good human being. So, you know, he's, he's a nice, Basu is a nice man and he spoke so well about me. But all good people have good things to tell about others. So, don't believe it. Don't believe it. Now, all these people have come here, do you know why? You have a problem. And the problem is, you are being schooled to believe that for every ill there is a pill. Right? Now, if you, if you read my article in the British Medical Journal, which can be got free on the internet, 
called there is no pill for every ill but there is an ill following every pill did you get that so don't be very very enthusiastic in taking a tablet a little while ago i was lecturing at the hinduja hospital and their highest person sri chand's daughter was in the audience so she came and said doctor you see when you have a fever that crocin gives you so much of relief you say uh, you know do you think that we should not take crocin i told her it's a very good thing lady because you are you are schooled to believe that there's a quick fix already now fever is not your enemy fever is your friend fever becomes your enemy because you view fever as your enemy you want to kill the enemy you know any enemy you want to kill right no you use the body in jesus christ's terminology love thy enemy you love fever narkardi saab or kekri saab or pai madam will tell you there was a time when we were students we were producing fever to treat syphilis syphilis was a dreaded disease then it was killing people and it was like today's you know whatever you want to call it big diseases we used to call it as syphilis and gonorrhea were the surgeon general of the whole thing and what we used to do as student boil milk from the milk vendor in the skin department and take it in a syringe and inject it to patients with neurosyphilis within about 5 minutes that fellow will shiver every muscle will shiver and his temperature will go to about 106 and then it will come down and it it treats his uh, so fever is a friend and it is there because the body wants your temperature to go up to help it to fight nothing is done in this world without reason but our reductionist reason there is a cause for everything cause effect thing is the biggest fox and biggest false thing that we are made to believe that for fever there is a cause this is very simple thinking because our forefathers used to think when you get smallpox it's the wrath of the goddess if you get tetanus the demon has hit you if you get cancer some some other person cause effect they are right today's professor of medicine will come in the ward he'll see a fever patient and the registrar will say malaria negative uh, typhoid negative sir, but still he has fever sir the viral fever very wise man saying viral fever he has not seen the virus that poor virus is blamed for everything suddenly in japan some years ago sujeet my phone has become alive it was dead from morning thanks to bombay's uh, connections now it's ringing don't worry now now i am i am connected to the world now there was a uh, olympics in japan i don't, don't remember how many years ago olympics in tokyo two years before the olympics a peculiar disease struck japan people became little paralyzed they became blind eventually died so we didn't know what disease it was so we called it as mon subacute myelo optico neuropathy which is just to confuse you with latin and greek that's all it simply means you are blind you are not able to use your link and you eventually die then then government said people will get frightened they will not come to tokyo for the olympics because olympics is business remember that olympics is not sport now no sport is sport now it is business and big gambling so they thought billions of dollars will be generated and that will be lost and uh, let me tell sucheta that if you are suffering modern medical crimes it is because of money up until money came on the scene modern medicine was so nice to be very precise up until the end of the 19th century even in america medical treatment was so good they had modern medicine so called but they didn't call it as they called it allopathy what is allopathy everything is allopathy except homeopathy allo is against pathy is disease homeopathy is homeopathy it's for the you know body again body only cures now 90, 1899 up until that time there was so called allopathy ayurveda was not there but herbal medicine was there herbal medicine was a very big rage in america chiropractic chiropractic came in about 1900 homeopathy then radio anesthesia which was using electric current to treat patients and shaman medicine then pranic healing 
reiki acupuncture and what have you chinese medicine tibetan medicine everything and equally respected then in 1900 1899 to be precise this dp palmer he was a medical doctor he was an md thought and rightly so that most of the problems are due to the spinal nerves and the brain and the spinal cord and he said if you set all the muscles right you will get treated so he called it as chiropractic so it became a science also but 1900 america discovered oil oil means money so they thought we can exploit the world of oil fooling the arabs and then make money and enjoy life and their own money we will probably buy that for 10 dollars a barrel and send them mineral water for 100 dollars a barrel and make money so at this time three players were there three very eminent players john rockefeller andrew carnegie and dp morgan these were in different business competing with one another then they realized with this new thing coming up we can all join together collaborate help each other and cheat the world that's how money big money is made by collaborating and cheating the world what did they do they there were 147 medical schools in america they were teaching various things 47 of them were teaching what is called allopathy they were all funded by carnegie mellon foundation and rockefeller foundation and dp morgans now other 100 medical colleges were teaching various things herbal medicine there are lot of herbal medical colleges acupuncture ayurveda chinese medicine i know ayurveda was not there chinese medicine etc etc so they influenced the president of the country gave him lot of money and told him we will have a one man commission to inspect the medical colleges and say which are scientific and which are non scientific what is the definition of science there is no definition of science anyway who did they appoint man called benjamin flexner no andrew flexner what was he he was the headmaster of a school in the carnegie mellon foundation retired now a headmaster of a school who doesn't know what medicine is becomes a one man commission to inspect medical colleges and decide like our mca many of the people in the mca don't know what medical education is but they are there some good people leave it and come out but others hang on and destroy medical education in this country but anyway now this fellow inspects 147 medical colleges in 6 months and writes a report saying that 47 medical colleges which are using the reductionist pharmaceutical chemistry are the only scientific ones the other ones are unscientific these 47 medical colleges ran on andrew carnegie mellon foundation did you understand that so with the stroke of the pen the other medical colleges were closed and america became scientific medicine in america and the other colleges were all called unscientific and they were not allowed to practice and whatever happens in america britain copies them and britain all same order came but the british royal family lived on homeopathy so the king said no and the queen also said no and homeopathy is still alive in britain but now there is a concerted effort to kill homeopathy in britain if any one of you is in the habit of reading english dailies there's a paper called guardian on tuesday normally you get a large full page cover by a young doctor called goldacre a goldacre is a young doctor who is financed by the pharmaceutical companies very heavily and is a good writer he writes such convincing articles every day that homeopathy is dead and don't believe in it in fact mo- modern scientific data in quantum physics shows homeopathy is much more scientific than modern medicine so homeopathy believes in energy treatment and there is a, st- a structure for water and this water structure is very very peculiar structure rustum roy a great name in science discovered the structure of water with lot of loose bonds in it even if you put any drop of medicine into a glass of water or a jug of water the structure changes okay this is called the signature of the medicine in the water then you dilute it in a bucket or in a well the signature remains the same so that's one thing the number two is if it is in the pill form all of them are in nanoparticles so nobody can detect a chemical in that 
when you can't detect a chemical you call it as unscientific but you was to detect a chemical you should know what a nanoparticle is so homeopathy is not dead it is still alive so i just to give you an idea to know that most of your school to believe modern medicine that we practice is very scientific if you define science as measurement and measurement as science probably medicine has no science at all because most of our diseases depend on our thoughts i'll give you one small example it is not what you eat that kills you it is what eats you that kills you did you get that your negative thoughts i want to destroy somebody i hate somebody i i am frustrated because i didn't become the president of india abdul kalam became and what happens these negative things go inside and destroy the functioning of your system inside you know what your body is quantum physics now shows us and i can take a photograph of that we got the camera called the photon camera is bio photon camera you are each one of you is a happy colony happy colony of 50 to 100 trillion happy individual human beings whom we call as body cells did you get that you are a beautiful colony madam of you must be about 75 trillion happy loving human beings we lived as a single cell human beings for millions of years then for economic reasons we thought collectively we are better off we came together and we became a human being and when we became a human being this 50 trillion cells each one was doing the work of a human being each one was sitting each one was squeezing each one was breathing each one was eating each one was working then they thought why all this few of us can collect and do certain things like in society you know with the varna system uh, one man will think can do something he becomes a brahmin another man will clean the place he becomes a, a, a cleaner and the third man will do only dalal and become a, um, collect money not sucheta because she is against money but all other dalals are dalaling money now and like this now instead of that so they form together and call themselves we call themselves organs and today modern medicine thinks human body is a machine like the motor car which runs by the organs is called organ based medicine and we have now not doctors we have no doctors at all very few doctors left we have specialists what are the specialists a specialist is one who knows more and more about less and less and who is a super specialist he knows more and more about and comes to a stage where he knows more and more about nothing now you have a headache okay now i don't say anybody has a headache i tell him you are a headache now by the time you go to a specialist because people think headache means i must go to a head specialist do you know where you should go you must go to a family doctor who knows you so well knows you so well that the minute you go there and say i have a headache he says hey why did you fight with your wife last night <laughs> you shouldn't do that you are always like this you know you are you are you are an irritable character why don't you make peace with her you know how you go home and call your wife and say honey i love you because even if you love your wife you periodically have to remind her <laughs> otherwise she'll forget and you might forget so you say that and your headache is gone did you know that or supposing you hate somebody you get a headache just sit back just sit back and do a quiet anuloma viloma pranayam take a deep breath in breathe out for a long time and after about five breaths you forget why you were angry in the first place and you're so happy because the fifth breath when you breathe out breathing out for a long time you start smiling you know you just forget this word and if there is a good doctor in india who is doing lot of good minus his political leanings he is ramdev not that he is teaching you scientific yoga no because he is doing commercial yoga but he has created that awareness and i i thank you for that because millions have become aware of that one day we were traveling to he was going to have a big thing in new york so i was also going for some lecture in new york so he was he came to know me so he came and sat and said dr saab i have got lot of data you must help me to write up then i said look your data is so scattered and there's no documentation because you say you treated cancer 
but there is no proof that it is cancer. I want you to have few engineers and some doctors and some laboratory. You authenticate it, write it, I'll tell you how to write it up as a scientific thing. And is uh, some secretary called Balakrishna Achar said, hey, give me your card, we will contact you, etc. They contacted me three, four times to come to Haridwar. But I said, do you have your thing computerized? I'll come. Otherwise, why should I come? Anyway, there I am told they are trying to do that. They've got a medical school there. They've got a university there. I hope something comes out of it because this is very good. So, now we will start. With, you are a colony of happy human beings. Did you understand that? And your cells love everyone else's cells. They talk to each other and they love one another. And this energy from your cell, which today we can trace, is called photon light energy. It's a very weak light and you can't see it with your eyes, but you can see it with a special camera. Not the cryon picture that you see halo around, that is old. This is inside the body, you can, if I photograph madam, I can see her cells. All of them smiling and laughing and jumping about. When I see some of them are not happy, she is, has got a disease. So, Wellness is happiness inside your system. Illness is unhappiness inside your system. That's all the difference. So what is health? You get up in the morning, ask yourself two questions. Do I want to work? If the answer is yes, you are healthy. So the definition of health is enthusiasm to work. Second thing is, do I want to do something for others? If the answer is yes, you are very healthy. That's called enthusiasm to be compassionate. So, health is work and love. But that love, younger generation, the spelling is L-U-S-T. That is unhealthy. But love has a bigger connotation. Like for example, in, in Indian philosophy, love has a different connotation. But Greeks have classified it so beautifully. Simple love is called eros, erotic love. That is L-U-S-T. Then the next level is called phil. You are a PhD, doctor of philosophy. Phil is love, Sophia is wisdom. So if you love wisdom, you become a philosophy doctor. Then the third one is very important. That's called agapi. Agapi in Greek means universal compassion. You know, you simply love everything. Everybody. Your friend, yourself, your wife, your children, others people to think, plus your enemies also. I'll tell you a simple formula if you are having some disease which doesn't get cured. Quietly one day sit in the evening. Nobody should be there in the room. And write down whom all you have been hating. Just write down the list. You may think you don't hate anybody, but if you sit and concentrate, you get few names. Write it on the paper. And then think back. Why did I hate him? What was the problem? Supposing I don't like, let us say, Kinima. There is Nagesh Kinimam. Ah, I don't like Kinimam. Somewhere Kinimam has, you know, I, I had some tiff. And that you carry the load on your back. And then your back aches, your lower back aches, your head aches, your heart aches, your esophagus aches, your stomach aches with an ulcer, or your gut aches with irritable bowel syndrome. Now you say, okay, I did hate this man. But why did I do that? And you do a little pranayama, you say, I didn't have done. So get his telephone number and say, Kinimam, I'm sorry, my apologies to you. All these years I've been carrying that hatred towards you, which was useless. I don't need it. You'll be surprised. Within minutes, your headache will disappear and you will become healthier. Because your cells again start loving one another. I was telling the Hinduja doctors a little while ago. Body cells love one another so much. I'll tell you how they love a little while later, if I have time or if you ask questions. Nima has sent a big list of questions, which is very good. When they love each other, supposing I hate you and my cells loving myself and loving madam also, I hate madam. Cells get confused. What is this fellow doing? You know, I like this uh, madam. Why is he hating her? So there is that conflict between ourselves. Me, you concept. This is my money. This is my shirt. This is my phone. This is not yours. And we fight for it. Even for six inch of land in the compound wall business, we go to the court. I'll give you a joke. A friend of mine went to Gothenburg. Gothenburg is a beautiful city where if you have a beautiful garden and a compound wall, you get rebate in your house tax. 
So everybody had a, one was competing with the other. But this man was taken near the cemetery, you know, near um, Sucheta's office. And the cemetery compound wall was not there. It was all broken all over. The man was nonplussed. He asked the guide, your municipality, which prides in itself in keeping nice gardens and nice compound wall, has not bothered to spend a little money to keep a nice compound wall here. The man said, sir, the story is not complete. I said, what is the story? Those who are inside the cemetery cannot come out. Those who are outside do not want to go in. There is no dispute why they have a compound wall. You get the point? So we are building compound wall around us and creating illnesses for us. So if you don't want to have a compound wall and illness, we live in a compound wall less house. Your house is open to everybody. I wrote to Abdul Kalam and also this Nair fellow when they were trying to go to the moon. I said, why do you want to spend 100,000 crores of the taxpayers' money for sending somebody to moon or sending a the spacecraft to the moon? You are not the first. There are 68 countries already have done it. And you are not, can't live in there. You know, because it will take another few hundred years to, for us to be able to live there. And you are not going to do anything there. On the contrary, today, I wrote to them, on the contrary today, this was, I wrote about 15 years ago, there are 67 million children in India born like you and me who are dying at a rate of 218 per hour for want of food. Want of food. And they suffer from a new disease which I wrote about 15 years ago called NIDES. You all heard about AIDS? Who has not heard about AIDS? How many of you have heard about NIDES? Ah, no one. Do you know why? AIDS has money behind it. NIDES has no money behind it. AIDS is such a small disease that only about 30 million people in the world have it. Here in India, we have 67 million people suffering from nutritional immune deficiency syndrome. All that you require is food, not oral polio vaccine, live polio vaccine. Because there is no protein inside, you will give live polio vaccine by the mouth and it can't become, uh, it can't produce any antibodies and gastrointestinal tract itself is the headquarters of the immune system. So they mutate into very powerful P1, P3 system. And in India today, the vi wild virus has disappeared because we have given 30, 40 doses of virus to a poor child. But there are now enough cases of vaccine polio and children are dying. Do you know that? No. According to some estimate by a very senior scientist, about 27,000 children have so far had vaccine polio. Who bothers? Who bothers? Nobody bothers. You think uh, the polio, I mean, this uh, AIDS is produced by HIV virus? Right, no? Yeah, anybody doubts that? No, no. You doubt it? Good girl. Good girl. I want you to read a book written by the best professor of virology in the world. His name is Peter Duesberg. Write down the name. Peter Duesberg. D-U-E-S-B-E-R-G. And the book's name is Inventing the AIDS Virus. What's the name? Inventing the AIDS Virus. And this book has a, don't read the book, it is very thick book, but buy it. Read the foreword. It has got eight page foreword by a Nobel laureate who found out how to find viruses. And that's called the PCR test. All the deans will tell you that they have got the PCR kit in their, in their college. Polymerase chain reaction kit. His name is Carrie Mullis. What's the name? K-A-R-Y-M-U-L-L-I-S. Read that forward in which he says, I quote, Peter and I, they are both working in Berkeley. Peter is the professor of uh, virology and Carrie is the professor of chemistry. Now he says, Peter and I don't know what causes AIDS. Peter has his theories, I don't understand because I am not a medical doctor. But Peter and I know one, for, one thing for certain which nobody can dispute because Peter is the best virologist who got the Genius of Century Award. And I am the father of the test which identifies viruses. Nobody can dispute. Peter and I do not think HIV virus causes AIDS. Full stop. Read that. Now why is this? Because if you say you are in AIDS research, 
8 billion dollars is allotted by the NIH for research fund. So everybody wants to get onto the AIDS bandwagon. Cancer is 2 billion, AIDS is 8 billion. Do you know why? That Zadovidin selling company is funding all this because they can't sell that drug because that drug was originally invented for cancer and when they gave it, the animal died with the cancer. You understand that? The animal also died. Anyway, today, man dying today is statistic in this world and one of the probably the best method of reducing the population. I mean, population control, if somebody dies, we can always say he died of his own. I did everything, this is what we do. If a man survives, the doctors pulled him out of the jaws of death will be the headline in the moneylife.com tomorrow. <laughs> if somebody dies, they did everything. You know, they had the best technology under the sun. But a man died, he was destined to die. You know, what can you do? That's what happens. When you succeed, you take the credit. When you are defeated, you blame God. God is very simple. He, anybody can blame you. No problem at all. He doesn't come to fight with you. So it's, it's always nice to. Now, I didn't tell you about that uh, small. So there is a pressure by, on the scientists in Japan. We can't have the postpone the Olympics. Find out the cause. Immediately, so many people came up. It's a viral disease. Because virus you don't see. So, so many papers, virus disease. One fellow came out with a fantastic idea. It's a Kuru-like slow virus. It slowly kills you. But there was one doctor, a good doctor, a very good family physician in Tokyo suburb. His name was Dr. Kano. Any family doctors here? This Kano fellow was keeping a record of every one of his patients. And he went through, he had about 10 patients with, with this man who died. And he went through the records and he found each one of these patients had taken a medicine for diarrhea, which, which was in India also at that time, called Mexaform. It's a quinoline derivative. Ah, and only those who took the Mexaform died of small. So he wrote a letter to the government saying that, why can't it be a drug reaction? Then they investigated and they found this is a drug reaction to Mexaform and Mexaform was withdrawn disease died a natural death. So there are a lot of diseases that we produce in this country and in the world which we create the diseases. There is a nice book if you want to read. It's called Inventing Diseases. What's the book's name? Inventing Diseases. And the author is a professor in Germany. Only problem is this book is in German. So if you can buy the book, and ask Sucheta to get it translated to English. It will be nice. I have a translation, but personal translation, it is in the, in the internet only. I can't give it to you. It is, uh, it is patented by the earth. Now, this book shows beautifully how we create one by one diseases. If you don't get that book, doesn't matter. Go to the internet. There is a journal, like Sucheta's journal, which is free called PLOS Medicine. P-L-O-S. PLOS is Public Library of Science. Then medicine, small letter. PLOS medicine, you open the whole thing, it's free. And then you say, Ray Moynihan, R A Y M O Y, no, yes, M O Y N I H A N, Moynihan. This fellow is the editor in chief of the journal, and he has brought out a full issue on. Disease mongering, disease mongering. We are selling diseases to the public because we want more people with disease. Supposing I am selling idlis in Bombay. I want even the Maharashtrians to take idlis in the morning. So I sell my idea that idli eating is very good. I have advertisements in the paper, television, and I show Amitabh Bachchan eating idli in the morning and saying, or Sachin Tendulkar saying, idli is strength and things like that. This is called disease mongering. So, you drink a drink in the, in the thing, which Amitabh Bachchan drinks, and then you get into disease, so you come, become a patient. So, it's nice, isn't it? This is how we do. Now, there is a new thing called disease creep. Disease is creeping on you. 
when i was young when we were all young doctors patient had chest pain came to the hospital then we diagnose heart disease you understand today no we go to the high school and then screen girls with an angiogram you stand in a high school and screen every child that comes there with an angiogram 76% of the children will have three vessel blocks if you don't have a block when you are young and it grows you will die before the age of 30 of a heart attack when you have a block it gives you what is called protection which is called re preconditioning so you must have a block but today showing the block to you and saying oh you are sitting on a volcano any time it might burst so don't even go home because if you go home you will uh, talk to somebody and may not come back if you go home also i can't guarantee because you may die on the way so you must see if your wife call her here if she doesn't have money ask her to sell her bagar sutra but it's all done when once they find out you are persistent or you have insurance medical insurance is the biggest curse american medical insurance companies are dying by the day and all the hmos including the latest one is the harvard hmo boston hmo which has now left about 100000 patients and doctors on the road and lot of companies have gone broke chapter 11 because if you are genuinely decompensating for uh, any illness because today even if you have a leg ache you want an angiogram done on you see there is a very nice man in our district he owns a huge temple which has got a lot of uh, income so he one day told me i am insuring the whole district for i told him you are doing a foolish thing i would much rather like you to build uh, toilets for all the poor people and give them some drinking water which he started doing now you will you will help them a lot he insured them and the premium was about 3 crores or something like that he paid now at the end of the year nearly about 1 and 1/2 crores of claims was rejected by the insurance companies now when it is rejected this man wanted to go to the court and this lawyer said don't going to the court no will help not help if you can appoint somebody to arbitrate and if the insurance company agrees you may like so he told me can you arbitrate i said if the insurance company also likes for your sake because you are done for good for the people it's a lot amount of work i will do that so i had the pile of case sheets in my office about one full room one case sheet is interesting i'll tell you what happened this was a farmer who was plowing his field and nicked his uh, foot with a little lot of injury small injury so he said namak insurance uh, as he said uh, we will go to the hospital so he went to the hospital so they said do you have insurance he said yes okay we will admit you because this requires immediate treatment so when they admit they said oh you got a cut there supposing we have to do anything we have to know whether your heart is all right your sugar diabetes and all they did every test that the hospital has after having done all that they couldn't get much money they did everything cat scan dog scan everything then ultimately they said we will do a skin transplant very quickly it will heal so they did a skin skin transplant and the bill was 1 lakh and 80000 rupees and it went to the insurance company now the local insurance company branch manager wrote on it in in reading unscientific method of treating a fresh wound signed so i was looking at that and i was amazed by the knowledge of this insurance man so i called the general manager and said who is this branch manager of yours please sir he has done any mistake no 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 i want to talk to him the man comes you know in fear so i tell him sit down i said did you write this yes sir i said i will call your general manager and ask you to be promoted you are not not branch manager you are going to be the general manager or one of the general managers he said why no you are absolutely right but how did you know that it is unscientific <laughs> sir to tell you the truth i am a veterinary surgeon didn't make much money i joined the insurance company <laughs> so don't get yourself medically insured because if you, the best thing is i'll tell you how to insure yourself ensure your health that's the wellness don't insure against your disease because today we don't do health care in the hospital i told the other day i wrote a letter actually to gulam nabi azad you are not a health minister you are a disease minister what have you done for health in india UNIDO has told us in 1998 India needs five things for health a 
clean drinking water for everybody. B. Three square meals uncontaminated by human and or animal excreta. Four. A roof on top in place of the starlit sky. Five. Avoidance of cooking smoke coming into the house. Six. A toilet for every house. Seven. Economic empowerment of the village women so that they don't die of their children starving and going to bed. Eight. Educate a girl child up to 20 years at least in school so that she doesn't get married at 13 and produce six children by 20. Fertility is 200 percent between 13 and 20. It becomes 50 percent after 20. 50, again, 30, 25 becomes 25 percent. 35 becomes less. Like that it goes. So best method of family planning. Government saw that and of course kept it under the table because it doesn't get the money. Who gives the money? And I wrote a letter to Abdul Kalam, Madhavan Nair and Sam Pitroda and also our Dadiwala in the planning commission. I said, why spend money on rockets? Spend money on children's food. Nobody did it. And 15 years later, today, the Prime Minister in the Red Fort was saying, it is a shame that our children today are dying of malnutrition. Can you believe that? I saw the other day a, 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 an internet thing going down. They were showing Obama, his facial expression under different uh, conditions. And then showing our Sardar Jandarith one. Like that. I wrote a letter, I said, now it's a shame, but what did you do? I wrote an article about this in the Bhavan's journal 15 years ago. I said the child is made in the mother's womb. And the whole child is made in the first three months. And if the mother doesn't have nutrition when she is, when the child is growing inside, the child is either dead or it is born with defective organs. After it is born, you can feed it both ways, upper end and lower end, nothing much happens. And these two chief ministers passed orders saying that a midday meal for pregnant woman. And I told them how to identify a village woman the day she stops her periods and then start giving this. I won't tell you the names because Somebody, somebody might see this video and then label me as somebody. And I don't want, I have no political affiliations at all. I'm, I, I love humanity. I love humanity. So that's my affiliation. And I, I belong to what is called Tea Party. That's the party that we have. Now what is important is, if you can correct the nutrition of a mother, you beget a generation of healthy children. Look at the children otherwise. He's born with a small pancreas. A small hippocampus major, a small liver, a small heart, and a deformed intestine, etc., etc. Now this boy, he grows, let us say, to about 20 years, then starts working in the Gulf. There he'll be washing the road, but he will get to eat what? Meat cooked in the evening and some solid carbohydrate diet. Suddenly so much of calorie goes in and the pancreas cannot produce insulin. So next, after six months, he'll come back with one wristwatch and one gold chain here, one chain here, and he'll come. Usually these are, you know, I see Malayalis and doctor, or checkup He is about 25 years. Checkup chey the pansari boy Sugar is up in the skies. Why? Because his pancreas cannot cope with that. And when he's about 35, he gets a heart attack because the coronaries are so small that they. And he goes to the school, he can't pass 7th standard because hippocampus major is for memory, creativity, exam, um, vomiting, etc. Vomiting means book vomiting. That's called the examination. <laughs> Education is what? Book vomiting, isn't it? He can't do the book vomiting. So this is our curse. And if you don't change it, you don't have a generation of well health.